Hey y'all, what's up? The Disciple Martial Art Currents reign back up in this anti Illuminati all day, anti telepathy all day, anti America all day, and everybody with them, yeah. So, this message right here is going to be um, about, uh, it's going to be a sub, it's part of the sub genre of, of my campaign about 40 states allowing adults to have sex with children. There's a couple, um, I'm adding sub genres, if you will, to this campaign to address other things that um, are unjust in this American culture and um, that applies with sexuality, children, and, and you know, and s sexuality with, with adults, with children. So I'm going to be um, having, I'm going to be adding them as they come, you know, but this is another one I um, thought about was necessary for a video. Because it goes into um, a lot of issues concerning children that may have had a lot of promiscuous sex as a kid. Kids that were promiscuous, as a, they were very promiscuous as a kid and people are holding them to that. And, you know, so I got to um, go through the technicalities, the wisdoms, the informations about these things so this one is going to be about first degree rape and um like i can't talk about every single state so i just think it's wise to to speak about where i come from which is north carolina and where in the in the case that i can't speak about all um states so in north carolina Let's just say in the case that a child is complaining um, about some things that, or a grown person is complaining about, or both, about in the case of a child, what has happened to them recently, sexually, in the case of an adult, something that happened in their past when they were a child and someone else was a child. Some authorities might conclude, well, they may conclude, or they may think they they can get, well, just at face value, I mean, they may think that first degree rape, which is a charge, would be on the table. But here is the definition in North Carolina of first degree rape. First degree rape, this is concerning children, okay? First degree rape is sexual intercourse with a victim under the age of 13. That would be the first victim. That, that the victim would be under the age of 13. And the actor would be at least 12 years old and at least and at least four years older. So Based, based, not trying to uh, manipulate this at all, just so you know, the technicality of that is if the, vic if the actor is not, there's the victim and the actor. If the actor is not at least 12 years old, you already don't have a case. You already legally by law. I'm saying, I mean, because to have a case, you have to have a charge that you're trying to enforce, trying to prosecute. In the case that a child is not 12 years old, then that's already thrown out. And they have to be four years and four years apart. So I'm guessing in the case that if the child is, um, the victim has to be under 13, let's just say 12. That means the child, the, uh, the actor has to be at least 16, you know, and then, you know, but also, you know, I think, uh, well, you can't use four years separate as a means of a charge. It's part of the full definition. So let me read it again. 
it, first degree rape is sexual intercourse with a victim under the age of 13. That's the victim. That's the person complaining. Whether it's a child or somebody when they get older and they want to try to bring you to law. They have to be at least under the age of 13. That's the first clearance. The second clearance, if you will, has to be um, the, the actor... When an actor has to be at least twelve years old, so if you have someone that's ten years old, you have some. That's you're not going to be able to enforce this. It doesn't matter if they're four years apart or five years apart, even six or seven. If the um, if the actor is not at least twelve years old, then you, which is the defining um, part of the person that you're trying to accused of rape then you don't have a case because that person isn't 12 12 years old now I would like to also note if you do have a case um, the four years apart would not apply if they both are under the age of consent so if you look at this definition I had to look at it for a long time and understand it. It's the full definition that they require for first degree rape, which is, like I said, first degree rape is a sexual is, is sexual intercourse. You would actually have to have uh, sexual intercourse on the table as well. This is technical, folks. This is not just, oh, I could just make it work with this and I can make it work with no. This is the definition. Just as real as the, a blade of grass is green. We can't make it any other thing. This is the definition. In other words, I know all of y'all are uh, understanding of going to get an ID and the points you need. All of these have to work just like getting an ID, a driver's license. You got to have all the points to make this crime stick. If you, you can't go into the DMV talking about, well, this point and that point and then you got a, a full whole defining point off no it doesn't work like that you have to have all the points you can't you can't try to go enforcing anything without all the points okay so you can't you, this is real this is serious this is law you can't go trying to force half of the points you're not going to get that cleared bruh so first degree rape again is sexual intercourse. Got to have that's the first point. If you don't have sexual intercourse there tech right here you you ain't going to have that point. That's the first point you got to have. Not uh not acts of um foreplay, kissing around. No, that's not first degree rape. No kid can talk about well we used to kiss all the time. That's not sexual intercourse. Okay, that's not, it says first degree rape is sexual intercourse. Some people will complain about kissing. That is not first degree rape. So, so first of all, the first point you got to have is sexual intercourse. Not, not kids messing around with, with, with animals. You know, that happens too. Not a kid messing around with a dog with another kid. Nope. It says first degree Rape is sexual intercourse. That's the first one. That's the first point you got to have. You don't have that. You got playing around with a dog and you got playing around uh, kissing all the time, something like that. You got bestiality, which is more normal than people would like to think. You can go and you go look in porn. They have a whole bestiality section. But, you know, some people try to act like it's weird. Then and down in Mexico, you know, they have donkeys, people, uh, women having sex with donkeys in bars. I'm just saying, my campaign is about making all things what they, my videos is about making it real accurate as opposed to what you thought it was, you know. So, that's pretty normal. But in the case that you did, it's pretty average, let's put it like that. The, um, if you have any case, kids messing around with a dog or cat, whatever, um, that that wouldn't stick with first degree rape because first degree rape, the first clearance and point you gotta have here, 
is first degree uh, uh, is sexual intercourse, which means obviously you know what that means. That means a penis going into a hole, and anal, uh, vaginal. That if that's not if it's not anal or vaginal intercourse, then you already lose as far as first degree rape. That's the first point. The second point is the victim has to be under the age of 13. You can't have some 14 year old talking about first degree rape. They have to be under the age of 13. They can't be 13 complaining about and, and, and you know, of course, try to take it to court and get first degree rape to go through. Nope, they have to be under the age of 13. So if somebody's complaining about their sex, something happened to them as, in, as far as their sex history, if they were not under the age of 13, then and they were 14 or something else, you don't have a case. Because right here, first degree rape is sexual intercourse with a victim under the age of 13. That's the second second point that you gotta have just like the dmv guys you gotta have all the points you gotta have all the points first degree rape is sexual intercourse that's the first point with a victim under the age of 13 that's the second point here's the third when the actor is at least 12 that's the that's the third point now the actor has to be at least 12 with someone that's at least that someone with a victim that's under the age of 13. They can't be if they're if they're 11 is thrown out. They have to at least be 12. I know my first experience in my life sexually. I was my very, very first experience. I was 10 years old. My first experience, I was 10 years old. You know, so, yeah, and so, and, you know, my sexuality, you know, I lost my virginity when I was, my real virginity, when I was 16, and um, that's when I was living in, on Bradford Drive, when I, I moved to Bradford Drive, we did as kids we moved to Bradford Drive when I was 12 12 years old well I was a little I had already turned 12 before we actually moved there the, sum, the summer of moving there so um yeah I was 12 when we moved to Bradford Drive just just some information um so the actor has to be at least 12 years old and four and at least four years older. Okay, four years older is the fourth point. So they have to be at least four years apart. So you you can't get this passed through first degree rape if they're two years apart. You have to have all these points. But the most important point I would like to point out is that you have the, the, the actor, what they call the actor, they don't say the aggressor or predator or anything like that. The actor has to be at least 12. So if you have a kid that was 11, 10, you know, then you can't, you can't, it's nothing you can do. By law, it's nothing you can do. Because that person was under the age of 12. And then I would also like to, um, to also note that also in North Carolina, if two are under the age of consent, like my other video, if they're both under the age of 18, you really don't have anything. You don't have anything because they're both, well, oh no, excuse me. They're both, if they're both under the age of consent, 
which in North Carolina is 16. If they're both under 16, that's another charge that you don't have anything if you have two people under 16 years old because they're both under the age of consent, both of them. No matter if you like, no matter if you like the age they are, if you don't, if they're 14, 15, 13, if they're under the age of consent for sex in the case of North Carolina, it's 16. If they're both under 16, folks. You can prosecute. You can't. No matter the age difference, you can't prosecute because they're both under the age of uh, of consent for sex. In this case, this law. So, as you can see, if by your your you know your laws, if someone as far as the first degree rape, they have to be under the age of twelve. So, like, I was just saying in my case, you know, if, if anyone complains of things that happen to them, um, they couldn't, you know, if I was mess, if some kids I was messing around with complained, you couldn't take it to court because, first of all, I would say, first of all, I would like to know, first of all, both are under the age of consent for sex in the first place, both of them. Me and whoever I was with is under the age of consent for sex. And then my first um, act was around late nine, early 10, early 10, maybe at best late 11. But definitely around that time, the things I've done, they were definitely under 12 because I remember distinctively moving to um, another neighborhood in, in North Carolina, which and called uh, Bradford Drive. I was barely 12 then because we moved the summer of, which technically speaking, we moved in probably before my birthday, which means I actually was 11 moving into Rafford Drive because my mom, my birthday is May 31st, so my mom would move in before, my mom, my family would move in before uh, school started. You know, it was well before school started, so if, you know, so all the sexual activity activity I did before we moved at 12, before 12, um, was well before 12 years old. All that activity was well before 12 years old. It wasn't right as I left, you know, from the other place I was living. So that's safe to say, you know, me moving, because I remember I went to Northwest Middle School, which I was in the sixth grade when I moved to that school, which would make me 12. I obviously remember I was 12. So when I moved to Bar Bradford Drive, I was, uh, I was in the sixth grade, 12 years old, and before that year started um, of going to school, that summer we moved. And so we probably moved a little bit before my, um, right, well, a little bit after my 12th birthday, which obviously I wasn't probably doing anything that final month of my 11th birthday, 11th year. So the final month of my 11th year, of age, I don't recall any sexual activity. So basically the 11th month, the last month of where I was staying before, um, before I moved at, at 12, you know, at 12 years old, that place, um, before I moved there and turned 12 in May 30, well, May 31st, 
there was probably in those last months of my 11th, I'm pretty sure in the last months of my 11th year, I was doing nothing. Which means everything was under 11 years old, under 12 years old. Which means in the case that someone found to incriminate me, everything I did was under 12. Because I moved to what I call, uh, what we call uh, Bradford Drive at 12. So those last couple months, nothing was done, which would make me still, which make, will make me 11. Having nothing done in the last couple months would make me let everything that's done beyond under those months that would make me 11. Makes sense. So everything I'm, that I did when I was young around the times when I first lost my virginity was under 12. And the last couple months of my 11th year, I did nothing sexually, which means then all of what was done was done before the last two last months of my 11th year, which makes it under 12 and under the last two months of my 11th year. So, you no, know, you, you have to say that and you have to clarify that because people are crazy, man, and they'll try to go around and act like you were like 30 and 40 and you're just now 40. Like, I'm just now 40. They acting like I did that. So, some things that I've done in my, uh, being a child, doing things with but the children, yeah, like that was done yesterday. <laughs> you, if you just now 40, 40s, they don't most of them start out around what late forties, early fifties. I mean, I don't really hear too much about young ones, young pedophiles. But anyway, they'll try to act like you. You, you ain't even the age they trying to portray you to be. They try to portray you like some fifty year old uh, sex predator. You ain't even fifty. That part. You're not even 50. You just now, I'm just now 30. I'm just now 40. So this time last year, I was I was I was in my late 30. My last year of my late last my last year of my 30s. But it's important though. This is important, man, because people, I'm gonna tell you what they do. The reason why I do this is not because of something on my conscience. I do this for records. I do this so that people, even if people watch these videos or not, I do this for records. I do because records are manifestations into our world. I do this for record's sake because people will twist things around and place narratives. And a lot of, I'm going to do a video on this too. Be careful for people that are saying they're sexual victims because they're not really sexual victims. They are losers. There are some people that are losers. And I have to say this because they literally lost in life. And then they look for someone to blame for why they didn't become successful. Check it. Check it. Check the lives of these people that talk about their sex victims. Let's see how successful they are. <laughs> I guarantee you half of them are failures in their own perspective. And they just have time on their hand to sit back and pick apart their life. And they look at the things that happened to them and they want to blame you and say you victimized them. Even if it's not even sex, it may be just whatever, like money or something else. And they may try to victimize you, uh, victimize themselves and say, that, well, you, you're the reason why basically insinuating you're the reason why I wasn't successful. You're the reason why I was dysfunctional. No, but let's look at that person's life. Did they have success? Were they healthy? Did they do everything healthy in life and then hit a hard space and then try to blame every, take their life apart and pick their life apart and try to see where they were, uh, where someone wronged them and take that and say, this is why I'm not successful today. No, the reason why you're not successful today probably is because you didn't do certain things. You could be arrogant. You could be a jerk. And that puts you in the situation you're in now. 
It's not even that you're mentally sick. We can't even let people play us like that. No. A lot of people say, well, they're dysfunctional because of that. No. Let's look at signs of healthiness. Let's look at where they are healthy. Let's look at the times in their life when they had all things together showing no signs of dysfunction. If they had places of no dysfunction, how do they go from being healthy and functional, skipping over that and going back to childhood talking about this is why I'm not functional. But you was just functional not too long ago. You had a house. You had everything going for yourself. Just a car, own plate, a wife. You had everything going for yourself. Now, all of a sudden, you dysfunctional. But you just had function. But you just was functioning. Doing jobs that require your mind. Doing jobs that require a, a person that has their faculties. But you lose your, but you go past using your faculties to now you never had them. But you just had your faculties. But you go back to your childhood and say, I'm not together now because I ne- my faculties weren't together because of what happened to me as, as a child. But you showed you had your faculties by the jobs you've had, living on your own, driving, kid, a kid, even kids and a wife or a husband. You've shown signs of being healthy, so you can't use that. Well, I'm dysfunctional presently because this person did that in the third to me. And having people feel sorry for you like you failed in life because someone did because of what someone did to you. But you've shown signs of being healthy, though. You've shown full signs of being healthy. Nah, nah, nah.